In this GibbsCam video, we're going to show you how to do nesting. Now, I've had a number of customers ask me, can we do nesting? And the answer is yes. You can do somewhat automatic nesting if you'd like to set up a macro and that uh, you could have it ask you how many in the X and how many in the Y, a few things like that. So you could set up a custom macro if you want, but we're just going to do this kind of freehand. So here's my first part, my widget part. And I'm going to highlight this part and just go to Modify, Duplicate, and Translate. And the first one I want to do is I'm just going to translate it in X. And I'm going to go uh, 3 and a quarter, nothing in Y. And I'm going to do this about 11 times. You can see it puts across 11 times there. And I'm just going to highlight all these again. Zero out the X and Y. I'm going to put in um, minus two and three quarter. This time I just want to do it six more times. So there I have my parts uh, ready to start cutting. Now I want to separate the holes uh, from this because I just want to select all the geometry all at once and say go ahead and cut it. So first I'm going to make a new work group. I'll just call this first one my widget and the second one I'm just going to call holes okay so I'm going to go back to my first work group and I'm going to go up to edit and say select all the holes that are quarter inch radius so you can see it selected all of them I'm just going to go to edit and click on cut and you can see it removes them I'm going to put these by themselves and paste them into the second work group. All right, now they're in my second work group there, just the holes. So here's my widgets. I've created a tool here, half inch end mill and a half inch drill. Let's make that two flute. Okay, I'm gonna bring up my cam. I'm gonna create a contour with that half inch end mill. I'm going to put in all my values here. I kind of want to do an arc in, arc off, just so I don't leave a little witness on there. You can put whatever you desire on here. Now, if we do this, if I just do select all and run this, in the normal toolpath in Gibbs, you're going to see when I render this, let's rewind it. Actually, let's do a uh, let's change this a little bit so you can see the screen better. Okay, that's a little better to see. All right, let's rewind this and let's cut everything. You're gonna see that's the standard uh, gives because uh, it normally cuts on the center line, but when you have multiple uh, pieces of geometry you're selecting at once, it wants to go down the center line. This is really handy when you're doing engraving because you don't have to select which side you want to cut, but not so much when you're doing nesting. So let's just open this back up. And let's click on this tab that says Offset. This is the standard default. We want to do Offset though this time. And we want to do, we want to cut the outside on closed shapes. So cut outside, closed shapes. And we want to climb. So let's just click on Redo. And let's do the simulation again. Let me rewind that. Okay, we'll center this up. All right. And let's play. Let's kind of go to an isometric view. And we'll turn on to show the tool this time. And let's look again. So there's my parts all nested and cut with the end mill. Now we want to go and do all the drilling. So let's go back. And let's go to my work group number two, which is just the holes. So I'll select an empty spot over here just so you can see the toolpath disappear. Now I'm going to clear this out, 
do just a drilling tile with tool number one, which is the drill. My values I need to change this. We'll go my parts half inch thick, so we'll go a little bit past that. And I'll just say select all the holes, click on do it, and it's going to do them in the order that they were drawn. So it's going to do this whole row, then come back and do this whole row. Of course, you can change that if you want. If you want to do automatic sorting, you can do that as well. We can show you how to do that here in a second. So to do this, I'm going to turn off my cam for a moment, and I'm going to turn on Control L. That's turning on the label, so you can see the order that it's going to drill them in. C1 through 24, then it's going to jump over to here, 25 through 48, then back over again. So we want to sort it to make it a little more efficient, a little more, a uh, little faster. So I'm just going to go to modify. Let's select all of them first. Control A, modify, and let's go to sort. This time I'm going to sort it in a kind of an S pattern. The main axis is going to be X. And I want to start at the X minus, which is going to be over here, and the Y plus, which is going to be over here as well. And I'm going to say you can scan in the Y hundred thousandths and the maximum gap in X four inches. There's a number of other choices you could choose, but this probably will work really well. So I'll click on do it. And you can see, let's zoom it up a little bit, but C1 through 24, and then back to 25, over 48, and then 49. So it's going to go in an S pattern. So now let's just... Let them select again, click on do it, and now you can see they're in a nice S pattern there. So let's do the rendering on all of it. So we'll, re we'll rewind the whole thing and do it from the start. So here's the end mill, and there's the drilling. So pretty easy to uh, nest in Gibbs for if you have a high speed table and want to do uh, like a router or anything like that or just standard three axis mill or anything else you'd like to do. So this is kind of how to do some nesting in Gibbs which works extremely well. Thanks for watching.